Oh, here we go. Dragon Lair. I am doing well. How you doing, man? Uh, sorry it took me um, a minute or two late. I'm going to kind of tread water here waiting for everybody to show up. Let me um, get my headphone in here, too. It is like a million degrees outside. Don't go away. It's um, 95 here in Cleveland. Yesterday was 103. It's just been a rough piece of business up here. Um, Anthony, hey. It's, uh, yeah, I'm complaining about the weather here. I'll talk about water changes in a little bit was, was what I thought I was going to kind of talk about today. But holy cow, Tom Kelly Outdoors, I appreciate you coming in to say um, hello. Yeah, we're um, mid-90s right now. We were 103 yesterday, and they uh, threaten us with even more high temps tomorrow. Um, Amy 5 Music, Hello. Championship show guppies. Hey, Steven. I know you're down there in Florida. We're sitting up here at like mid 90s right now. It was 103 yesterday. Got no idea what the Bronx is, and I bet you're glad you're not sitting up there. Um, just toasty, and they say it's going to keep getting worse. So I don't know. Um, okay, I'm going to tread water here a little bit, and then we're going to talk about water, water changes. Um, it's interesting. Actually, maybe I'll start now just because I'm in the mood to talk about it. When uh, people talk about water changes, it, it's interesting um, in my mind what they mean by that. So some people just talk, when they talk about water changes, they're just saying, well, I'm going to take you know 20% of the water out and put 20% more in. That's all they mean. Other people mean, well, I'm going to take some water out and then I'm going to also vacuum the mulm off the bottom and I'm going to put some more water in. And then the third kind of person says, I'm going to take some water out and I'm going to vacuum the mulm off the bottom and I clean the front glass, side glass, back glass. You know, I'm going to really clean the hell out of this fish tank. Um, I usually only mean when I say water changes, that's all I'm doing. And I have a semi-automatic system. So I've got a a little PVC thing that goes into each tank with a little sponge across the bottom, and it's all hooked to a vacuum system that spits it out into a, um, in my particular case, I have a sump pump that takes it out, out in the backyard. But the whole idea is all I got to do is turn a valve in. You know, this one goes down, whoop, that one goes down, whoop, next one goes down, whoop. And getting the water out of the tank is not an issue. And so that's what I mean by a water change. And, um, when I go to put water back in, that's a whole different conversation. But I also mean that I am not um, cleaning the mulm off the bottom, nor am I cleaning the glass. I do that as a separate operation with a, you know, a siphon or a razor blade and, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, let me check. Oh, Petsotics, hey, glad that you are here. So with the water change. So here's one of the things I wanted to talk about. These days, a lot of people talk about aging their water. And I'm not sure why. Well, I, I know that for a starter, they're, they're talking about aging it to get rid of um, chlorine and then chloridamides. Now, in my particular case, I have a pretty complex set of filters ending in an RO system. I no longer use the RO system, but I still have you know, the pre-filter, the pre-filter, post-filter, blah, blah, blah. So it gets rid of all of that various badness. So in my mind, I don't need to age it, but some people still want to do that. And then they seem to want to add prime or safe to it. And if you read the bottle of prime, well, it says that what it does is it removes chlorine or chloridamides. Well, in my particular case, I don't have any of those. Uh, if you do, then, then you might want that. They also talk about heavy metals that are in the water, and it removes that too. 
and it makes me wonder, well, I know that my filters remove a, a, a myriad of, of badness. If you read the back of the label, I mean, there's like 20, 30, 40 things it takes out. Um, I don't know if they're bad or if they're good. And Prime also says that it binds with ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Well, now I'm worried about that because I think I want some nit some ammonia for the nitrite to have something to eat, for lack of a better word, and the nitrite I want for the nitrate. But in other words, I don't want a short circle biocycle. So now I'm not sure if I want prime in there or if I don't want prime in there. So I've been, uh, it, and it's a real difficult question to ask people, um, you know, what do, what do you do for your water? And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll talk you through it. And, and then I get gets to the prime or it gets to any step. And everyone thinks, well, that, you know, that I'm challenging it. Well, I kind of am, but I'm not challenging in a way to make them wrong. I want to know why do you do the things that you do? And sometimes it seems like people are using prime out of, you know, superstition. I've always done it. Or um, I'm just trying to get it to do this one thing here. And you know, I'm fine with all the other stuff. Well, I'm fine with the chlorine and chloridamide. And I've always used the, you know, little chlorine drops, which doesn't do anything for chloridamide. But I don't think they use much of that in my local water stream. But it's important that you look at that, because if you don't look at that, uh, you're going to kill fish. There's just absolutely no two ways about it. But aging the water, so in and of itself, aging in a garbage can doesn't get rid of chloridamines. Well, it does if you wait a certain amount of time, but it doesn't get rid of all the other stuff. So I'd be very interested in what you guys do for your aging process, what you do for water treatment. Um, it would not, so by way of example, there, there's a lot of different types of um, water treatments or water conditioners that you can put in. And if all you have is a couple of two, three tanks, not that big a deal. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here at 40 heading toward 50. And, you know, I don't go out and just buy a little, you know, drop, 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 drop. I need 50 of those at a time. And so, yeah, I can buy the big giant thing of Prime. But I want to make, I really want to know what it is that it's doing. Is it short circuiting the bio cycle? Is it not short circuiting it? Short circuiting it? Am I getting myself into a different problem that I can't get myself out of? So I don't use any of that. And I have a reasonable degree of success in the, in the fish room. I, you know, the biggest sign of life is the fact that the fish are alive. The second form of life is that they do spawn. And so beyond that, I, I don't know what else I could be doing that I should be doing. So let me go over to the stream here for a second. Say some hellos that I haven't done and address some uh, comments if there are any in here. Let's see. Maybe I have said hello to everyone. Um, Anthony's got a, um, uh, Stephen's got a comment. Let me get to Anthony's first. Uh, Anthony says it doesn't remove ammonia. It turns it into ammonium. It is less bad on your fish. Your cycle still cycles it like ammonia. Okay. So, Anthony, based on that, why not just leave it as ammonia? Well, you well you just said because it's less bad. Um, okay, let me go down and see what Steven says. I'm primarily a dedicated user of Prime, in my H water pail. Swear by it. Um, but Steven, can you tell me why? Um, beyond. Um, and, and maybe you don't need an excuse beyond this, beyond the fact that it works for you. You know, um, you've had success at biblical proportion, so maybe you don't need anything more than that. But, I mean, have you gotten to the point where you can go, if I don't use Prime, X, Y, and Z will happen, or do you just know you've done it long enough and that's just all there is to it and you're just not even going to think about doing anything else? Um Amy five music. I use RO water and then remineralize it. Well, Amy, I'm telling you, that brings up a whole different set of problems. So when I did RO, um, I was doing it primarily for plecos. And the thought there was 
you either go 100% RRO or you mix it 50-50 with tap water or some percentage. Yeah, pick some percentage of, of your tap water so that you had the minerals in there and, and could work with the minerals. Now, what always goes weird to me is so you do RRO, it takes everything out of there, including the minerals, and then you remineralize it. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell did you take all the minerals out to begin with for? Um, and, and I and so I don't know how to remineralize properly. I mean, there's a lot of everybody's got their own idea on remineralizing. You know, you you should have you know, two of these and four of those, three of those, and you know, then it's the less wax inversion process. And you know, you know, you need a full moon and a and a shaman. You know, so I I'm lost on that, which is why I stopped doing RO. I mean, I could take my TDS down to absolutely zero, and I did, and my fish seemed no better for it. I got no more spawnings than I had before, and the fish didn't really seem any healthier for it. But what I really did do is have a high, high water bill. For those of you who don't know, depending on the type of RO system that you have, for every gallon of RO that you make, at best, you have to throw an additional gallon away and sometimes it's as high as three gallons away. And so your water bill goes up, you know, a lot. So, all right, let me go back to, um, let's see. Uh, Dragon Lair, not sure if Prime removes nitrates though. Need to research that. Ammonia burns gills, ammonium doesn't. Um, okay, so Dragon Lair, let's stop with that one. So the bottle of Prime, I wish I would have had it up. I read it before and it says removes ammonia, nitrate, well, no, it says converts ammonia, nitrite, nitrates to less, you know, damaging things. But if we go from the standpoint of um, just putting in, you know, the, the drops of, gosh, I wish I remembered what it was, because you, you can buy the powdered stuff and make up a thousand gallons of it for like a nickel. That takes the ammonia out very, very quickly. And so now, so I guess I'm not arguing with the removal of the ammonia, or I'm sorry. I'm not worried. I, I'm talking about two different things here. Let me go back. Chlorine is what I, all of that. Um, ammonia is less toxic to fish than ammonia. But does nitrite need ammonia or ammonium? That would be my question. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, so so that's what I'm talking about, Anthony. There, I, I wasn't clear at all, and I'm sorry. Um, let me go down to uh, Stephen. Without aging my water, I'd never be able to frequent water change at 40% twice a week. Now, that's interesting, Stephen. I do 50% twice a week, and I don't age. But like I say, I just filter the living hell out of it. Um, and then pour it right in, even, even your guppies that you have, have sold me seem to be doing phenomenally well. Now, maybe it's the case of if I were to age it, they'd be doing even better. So here's my problem with the amount of tanks. And, and Stephen, I got to believe you got more water in your fish room than I have in mine. I can't do 50% twice a week. I have, God, I think believe I've got 2,500 gallons. I can't store 50% of that, you know, for a Monday change and then get ready for a Thursday change. You know, I, I can't, I can't hold on to that much. So I'm wondering how much you're um, hanging on to there. Um, Amy five music because tap water is manufactured as well. The cage in my tap water is very high. Okay. So that's why you're using RO. Okay. Yeah. So, so I get that. Okay. Um, the, the problem is, is RO, I mean, that's that's a heavy price to get your KH down. And yeah, but if it works for you, okay. Let's see, um, Dragon Lair. Many plecos breed when the hardness goes down uh, during rains. It would make sense they would breed when you add RO water. Well, it would make sense, wouldn't it, Dragon? But that's not what I saw in my tanks. Um, my 046 it didn't breed. My leopard frogs didn't. I, I got... The same thing I always had. Bristle nose breed doesn't matter when they're, you know, the guppies of the pleco world. The more complex um, plecos, RO seemed to make no difference. But here's what I did hear about RO. 
and tell me what you guys think about this. It's not so much making the fish breed. You can, you can fake them into that with a cold water change or letting the, you know, um, the tank sort of, uh, what do I want to say, evaporate down and down and down and down. So miss a water change for two, three, four weeks, then do the cold water change and bring it up so you can fake them into it that way. But here's what I'm told the soft water does. It hardens the eggshells. The Cory guys who breed the real exotic ones like the uh, Parallelis and the Bosmani Cory's tell me that without at least a 50-50 uh, RO, um, the eggs won't survive, and that's the reason for it. So, so I don't know, you know. Um, Amy says, plus I grow orchids. So the RO, so RO can't do your orchids any good, but the remineralization does. So Amy, the, the, the part that drives me crazy about RO is the whole idea of having to remineralize. I don't know which of the various remineralizations to use. I don't know how much, I don't know what I'm aiming for. And theoretically, um, we're not supposed to be paying that much attention to TDS. And so measuring KH might be the only tool we have. I don't know. Um, big tank hangs the house. Hey, man. Um, Jada Thompson. Hey there. Championship show guppies. I've got gallons of water sitting around the room here because I let mine age too. Um, yeah, gallons. I, I really think I'm going to need about four to 500 gallons to do you know, stored water. If I'm just doing 50% water changes, I just move a hose to a hose to a hose. I, I, I grant you, if I'm doing like a, you know, 40 gallon tank and I do a 50% chain, I clamp that hose on there. Cause it's a slow sort of uh, drip. And that's not a drip, but I mean, it's a pour out of a, you know, quarter inch hose. I'll, I'll go come back upstairs and set the timer on the stove for 15 minutes. And it takes about that long to drip out 20 gallons. So, I mean, it's a long, long, long process. So, um, let's see in the chat here. Uh, Dragon Larry, Amy 5, do you know, I assume that orchids need slightly acidic water to be able to absorb fertilizer. Couldn't tell you a thing about that. You guys are way beyond me there. Uh, Amy 5, uh, GH and KH use equilibrium for my fish to the desired TDS. And I see that's the problem. So you're measuring TDS, which is a combination of GH and KH. So I'm not, I don't know. I, I suppose I'm being too exacting about this. But it seems to me that um, if you're measuring something that is a blend of four or five things, which is what TDS is, but all you're adjusting is two things with um whatever the stuff is that you said that you had here. Oh, Equilibrium, I assume that's a brand name, right? Um, you're only adjusting two things for a TDS of, that's a myriad of things. I, like I say, maybe I'm just overthinking this. I don't know, but grab something to drink here. Um, Jada Thomason, hey, hey. I only have three tanks, five, a 10, a 55, and I don't change them all on the same day. Yep, that makes sense. Like I say, I'm sitting, I, I got to tell you, every bit of 1,500, 2,000 gallons, so I don't know. Um, Dragon says, Amy, five, when I worked at an orchid breeder, we added ascorbic acid to our fertilizer water. So we added vitamin C, essentially. Boy, that had to be expensive, right? But um Amy says equilibrium doesn't add KH. So if it doesn't add KH, then what's it adding? It's only adding GH, Amy. Um, oh, and then you add baking soda for KH. Oh, that makes my head hurt. So you're using equilibrium and baking soda and measuring TDS. I makes my head hurt. Okay. Um, Jada says, all my dirty tank water goes out to the garden. Cardio for me. Yeah, and I um, was using a sump pump to take all of mine out to the garden, but we are in such a drought situation up here that all it does is roll down through the cracks in the earth, 
come back in through the footers and winds up in the sump again. So I can't even do that anymore. Uh, we've just got too much um, dryness up here. So, and that was a, so that was another question that um, took me a long time to solve. I run a dehumidifier downstairs and, and there's a lot of water that comes out of that. And it's um, essentially, it's essentially our old water, believe it or not. And I thought, well, I wonder if I can use that. And the problem is, is that you cannot because the coils themselves have some level of corrosion on them because they're copper coils and they, they drip water. And, you know, so that would put uh, rust essentially into your tank. But there are people that go through the effort of actually um, painting a loose finish on those coils just to use that. And so, I mean, if you really, really, really want to uh, economize or efficiency eyes, what you have there, um, yeah, it's a whole different conversation, I guess. Um, let's see here. Andy says, plain RO for orchids, they get fertilizer every fourth time or so. Okay, so so you're in essence, you're just adding inert moisture and then putting fertilizer on. Makes sense, okay. Dragon says, not really. We bought 20 pound bags of the powder cheaply and only took a half a cup per 500 gallon tank to drop the pH. So Dragon, essentially, um, when you when you think about it, that the pharmaceutical industry is then taking 20 pound bags of vitamin C, turning them into little tiny pills, monetizing that at God knows what price. Um, that, that just tickles me to no end, but you know, isn't that the way that's got, right? Um, Let's see. Um, oh, Stephen, got to go. Mrs. Dinner's really nice talk. Stephen, thanks so much for stopping by. Hey, don't forget to send me an invoice as soon as you're ready. Okay, bud. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping in. Jada says, I got uh, damp red pails everywhere. Oh, boy. Um, that's one way to go after it. I used to do that too, but boy, I'll tell you, in the fish room, got to have a, I have to have a dehumidifier, but I'm running a lot of stuff down there. So, you know. Um, let's see what else we got going on and probably got nothing else going on in the chat right this second. So, um, what were some of the other things I wanted to talk to you guys about? So I wanted to talk about water and it's sourcing. And so at water change time, um, I don't at that particular moment, vacuum out the mulm or clean the glass. And I'm wondering whether you guys do or you don't and how regularly you clean the mulm out of the tank. Now, for those of you who know me, um, I started a huge YouTube fight with, oh, I think you can guess without too much work who it is I'm talking about, who seems to adore mulm in his fish room. But um, we went back and forth on whether mulm is good or mulm is not good. I sit on the fence of mulm is not good. And my argument is as follows. If mulm is really good and you think that the byproducts of uneaten food and fish poop are a good idea, then I would highly recommend you stop flushing your toilets, don't take out your garbage, don't wash your dishes, eat all your food off of dirty plates. Get my point. So consequently, mulm is not good. It does not serve very much in the aquarium at all. So I try to get it out of there as fast as I can, but I don't do it when I change the water. And there's no earthly reason um, other than the fact that I have a semi-automated system that kind of, I use a vacuum pump to get the stuff out, as I said earlier. And then I come around later on and I siphon, or depending on how it's, um, um, put in there. Sometimes I use a turkey baster to take that out and put that into a bucket. The turkey baster is a hell of a lot easier, I will tell you, than getting the um, siphon going every single time. But I'm real interested in what you guys do, um, you know, as far as, um, you know, clean out your tanks. Uh, let's see, Jada saying, we don't have basements here, we need a snorkel. Where are you at, Jada, that you, well, I, I was going to say a lot of places in the United States don't. I mean, if you're down in New Orleans or something like that, you're right. You know, the second shovel full, you, you wind up with water. I have to be honest, I mean, even in Cleveland, I don't know why we put basements on things, because we have to put 
all of these um, footers around them, and then the water comes in, and then we collect it in a you know, crock at the bottom, and we send it back out again. And I thought, well, if you hadn't let it in in the first place, you know, why not just put a pad down and put the house up one extra floor? But, you know, I don't know. Um, Dragon, I'm an outlier. I only change water one time a month. Mulm is fine if you're heavily planted in a bare tank. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. I'm I'm bare tanks only. I don't have any kind of vegetation other than floating stuff. So I'm with you. Jada, oh, on Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah, down in that um, neck of the woods. It's fairly damp. I remember uh, in New Orleans, it's the same way. You know, you don't bother putting caskets below earth down there. Um, you know, what's really weird, though. You get up into Minnesota and stuff like that. They do build basements and they don't even bother taking water away from the house. It's so sandy that it just goes straight down and doesn't seem to be an issue for them. So it, it's it's a funny, you know. United States that we live in here where everybody's got something, you know, just a little bit different going on. So, um, any, so anybody else got thoughts on, you know, getting the mulm out of there? How often do you do it? Do you do it at all? Um, technically speaking, if we were all really smart fish keepers, um, you know, we wouldn't have mulm in the tank. We would feed just enough and, uh, you know, we'd have enough, you know, uh, we'd have some snails in there or some plecos and, you know, all of it, you know, the circle of life kind of thing. But it's not always that way. Amy says, uh, amazing how much poop three small plecos make. Holy cow. You know, that tank gets vacuumed and water changed. Okay, so you're doing both. Got it. Um, you use a siphon, a vacuum. Well, you just said vacuumed. Um, I'd like to find a good vacuum because I have not been able to find a good vacuum. Um, at least one that I can, part of my problem is I don't want to move tank to tank to tank and transfer disease around even in my own tank. But, um, you know, so uh, Jada says originally from Minnesota, my tanks have pool filter sand and I really don't see any milk. So, um, well, no, I know what you meant. Um, so here's my problem with pool filter sand. If you don't have fish that churn it up, that's, that's fine. And if you do have fish like quarries that churn it up, that's fine too. But the problem is, is um, mulm can get down underneath the pool filter sand and then it turns into sodium phosphate inside there. And then when it gets churned up, it can poison the fish. So there's a real problem there. And so I've decided to um, not chance it with the pool filter sand. I, it just does not seem to work for me. A lot of people make it work. Um, it's just more than I really want to do. So uh, Dragon says, my Mbuna tank has an undergravel filter, and I don't change water in there, but every three months just top it off in between. Hey, if that's working for you, you know, and that's part of the thing too. Hey, Benny. Hey, JH. Good to see you both here. Um and that's the thing too, um, and it's going to sort of be the topic of next week. But all these myths that we have in the uh, aquarium hobby, uh, people will say, "No, no, no, it's always A. No, 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 it's always B." And uh, as I've said, there's three sides to every argument: the left side, the right side, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle. If something is working for you from a fish standpoint, don't listen to somebody else. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Just stick with what's working for you. Um, if it's not working, then you can start talking to a bunch of other people. But, um, you know, let's see. JH, pool filter sand is many times made from crushed glass. Very breathe of dust when pouring it in. So, JH, um, I'm not going to be able to remember this guy's name. He is one of the foremost quarry breeders in the world. He's... Um, in Indianapolis, and he's actually a chemist. And this guy sources his sand. So if you really put the silica under, a lot of the silica is pointed or is smashed or is an odd shape. He sources his quarry sand to be perfectly spherical. And I mean, you talk about chasing 
you know, stuff like there's something else, but um, he literally makes RO water by those um, 300 gallon totes for his chemical, because he makes chemicals. He's a millionaire chemical engineer. And you look back into his shop and, and they literally have a thousand totes of RO water. I mean, they just make like there's no tomorrow. I wish I remember the guy's name. Got some interesting videos on YouTube if you really, really want to see some exotic quarries. And um, a little on the eccentric side, he's not terribly verbose. I don't think that he's worried about giving away his secrets. Um, what he might be worried about is, you know, people coming in to try and, you know, relieve him of his quarries or something like that. But um, let me get back here. Um, Jade, I have to swish it with chopsticks for dead spot. Yes, yes. Okay, so you understand, Jada, what I'm talking about there. Um, you know, it's, um, yeah, you get those dead spots, and it's just deadly for the fish. Jade, don't breathe the dust. I will agree with you. Very, very dusty. Um, Dragon, Umbuna need and do best in very hard water. My TDS out of the tap is 260. We're about a uh, buck and a half, 150 here in, in Cleveland. Um, Dragon, where you, remind me where you're at again. Um, Although everybody can have, um, like up in, I'm in Northeast Ohio, you get up to Michigan, I mean, it's liquid rock up there. So, um, Benny, I love my new scape. So I'm a pygmy quarry spawning this morning. Look at you, young man. Pygmy quarry spawning. Very nice. Um, let's see here. Oh, Creek's here. Hey, Creek. Um, J.H., yeah, you have to look at it under the microscope. Crushed glass is not good to breathe in, not good for quarries. Crushed glass is probably not good for anybody, right? But um, I know they use it. Uh, Dragon, Auburn, Alabama. Auburn, Alabama. Got you, gotcha. I don't know why I would have thought you would have had softer water. But, um, no, it makes sense. I mean, if you're getting it out of, like, a limestone quarry or, or you know, I mean, like like with Cleveland, we, we're pulling it out of the lake and filtering it, right? And there's, um, if nothing else, underneath Lake Erie are huge salt mines. They uh, uh, go out, uh, I want to say, 15 miles under the lake and then side to side, you know. I'm surprised that the lake hasn't, you know, fallen through, but apparently it hasn't. And there's videos about that, too, but... And you can take a tour every once in a while, but there's no way in hell I'm doing that. Uh, I'm absolutely frightened of heights, but I am terrified of getting under there and having a cave in. The worst part would not be that I died. The worst part would be it caved in. I didn't die. And I had to, you know, just sit there and live with it for a while. So, but anyway, um, it, it's interesting how our water, depending on where it comes from, um, you know, what it consists of and how it got that way. So, you know, Cleveland water is not so hard because it's got more of a salt base. So, let's see. Benny says, I don't know what I should do with the eggs. Is there in a community tank? And I have a ton of ambulia now floating at the top, and they spawned in that. And there's no way I can find all the eggs, if any. So, I guess here's the thing, Benny. Um, you leave them in there, they don't stand much of a chance, not really. I don't know what ambulia is. I'm assuming that it's a floating plant of some kind. If it were just a species only tank and there was nothing in there, you might just get lucky and have some of the fry survive through. Um, so here's what I used to do if this gives you any idea. I have tons of java moss and when I say tons, I could probably fill up three to four 55 gallon tanks with all the java moss in all of my tanks. And so when I do sell it, I have quarries in all of my tanks too. And people will typically write or call me about a month or two afterwards. And they would say, Did, were you keeping, you know, insert name of quarry, were you keeping albino quarry in there? Were you keeping, you know, this kind of quarry, that kind of quarry? I said, yeah, I was. Well, apparently the eggs went along with the java moss, the eggs hatched in the new tank. The fry survived, and now people have got, you know, free quarries. Um, so for a while, I was actually teasingly calling it, you know, a magic java moss, because you never know what you're going to get. Well, then people started writing me, and they go, yeah, you didn't tell me you had snails in there and your damn magic java moss. You didn't tell me that you had um, 
oh, it's that other crap that grows across the top of the tank. Got some of that too. So then all of a sudden it didn't, um, wasn't so funny. But um, uh, let's see, dragon sand, pull the plants, put them in a breeder box. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have, um, well, that's the thing, Benny. I, I uh, um, yeah, well, I, I can believe that you have a lot of plants. You should be able to at least isolate some of the eggs or if nothing else, um, start pulling out um, the plants and see if you can shake the eggs loose. And if you can't, you know, do what you can to try and save what you can. And then when they start to hatch out, then you can take the plants back out and put them into the tank. Um, I mean, the whole idea is to try and save some of them. You're not trying to, you know, try and save absolutely everything, right? Um, snails are an excuse to get a puffer. I had a puffer, Amy. The problem is, is I kept trying to move the puffer from tank that's because trust me, he goes through all of the, um, the snails, right? But, um, you know, eventually uh, said puffer, I don't know what happened, but the puffer died, you know? And that's the problem with just one of them. And I had a pea puffer, you know, lee, lee. where's my, where's my camera? Teeny tiny little bit cute as hell. But um, eventually he went the way of the buffalo. So, and they're hard. They're not expensive. I mean, I mean, I, I got wholesalers I deal with, you know, when they get them in, I mean, I can buy, I think I can get 15 of them for $12. Problem is I don't need 15 of them. Um, and that's the bad news about um, snails too. You know, you put a puffer in the tank, clears it out, put another one, clears it out. Well, eventually they clear everything out and then there's nothing left for them to eat. And then you're buying snails. So yeah, that's a whole different problem. Let's see here. Um, Tom Patterson's here. Tom says, thought most filters and is quartz. I do not know. That's a, a level of geology that's one step beyond me. But I do know just based on listening to that one chemist, apparently sand has different shapes to it and might be an amalgam of a number of different things. And what that guy wanted was completely spherical sand. It was expensive, but he got what he wanted. And he brought it in by the ton for his tanks. So let's see, Jada says, coolies and assassins, I love them. Coolies creep me out, so they're not gonna be here. I put them in axolotls in the same category. I do not want them in my house. I love nightmares about them. I'm like a girl when it comes to those things. Don't even want to think about them. Um, let's see. Assassin snails is what I think that you're talking about. Yes, I love assassin snails too. I can absolutely do that. Um, and I hate to stereotype that whole thing. I'm like a girl like that. I mean, a stereotypical girl. I literally can't stand to look at them very long. They're very, very creepy. Um, Benny says, pygmy quarries are so cute. They are. They are absolutely adorable. Bob Kaler is in the house. Oh, my God. Hey, Bob, I'm about to send all these guys your direction in about 20 minutes here. Um, Bob Benny says he's got pygmy quarries and they spawned. Amy says most other loaches too. Yeah, loaches and I just don't get along. So I, I, I you know. Dragon says, sand blasting sand is more likely to be rough than pool sand. Yeah, I can believe that. Um, probably manufactured, you know, just for that. Move the microphone here so I can sit back a little bit. Um, yeah, probably manufactured just so that that can happen. But um, Dragon says, hey, Bob, wondered where you were. Now, I did not wonder where Bob was. I figured he was in Cleveland, Tennessee. You know, the reason I know that is because I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. So there you go. Um, so there we go with sand. And um, let's go back to, um, so we talked about water. We talked about mulm. How about cleaning the glass of the aquarium? Where are you folks on that? Now, I tend to clean only the front glass until I start to see brown algae. I don't know why. Brown algae is no worse than any of the other ones, but somehow green algae and I are just fine. Brown algae and I, not so fine. I just think there's some kind of badness in there. I don't know if I've seen one too many Stephen King movies, but 
that's the only time I'll go after the other walls is when I start to see brown algae. How about you guys? And so I clean, oh, by the way, so I clean the inside and you know, the water side of the front glass so that I can photograph and I clean the outside for the same reason. And for those of you that don't know, um, don't take, you know, the Windex and you know, go like that. Take the rag back here away and go on the rag, patty, 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 patty. Then go up and this and that and the other thing. You do not want the Windex in the water. That's a bad, bad, bad thing. Um, let's see. Amy says just the front when it needs it. Yep. Jada, I only clean the front glass also. Yep. Okay, cool. So we're all of a like mind on that. Um, how many of you go through the effort of painting the outsides of your tanks black and the bottoms black? I do not paint any of my tanks. I'm starting to think about doing that. Any of you have strong feeling about that? Um, let's see, Benny, let's see, they just paid some eggs on the glass, laid some eggs, layer, okay, just laid some eggs on the glass. Um, I got some, good, because Benny, I was going to say, um, razor blade or a credit card, and you should be able to get some of them off of that. And if you come up with 20, 30, yeah, you should be in great shape that way. Um, Jada says, just a note, if you use hand sanitizer, don't turn around, put your hand in the tank. I learned that the hard way at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, Jada, you are so wise for bringing that up, and I'm really glad that you did. Um, so often, uh, I've done the, and I haven't made the fatal mistake, but I do so many things in the basement because um, it's just me in the house now. So I'm running a load of laundry, and I, you know, I'm putting detergent in and slaps into my hand, and then I throw some um, oxyclean, and that's on my hand. And, you know, then I go over and do some other stuff. And I mean, I have to consciously wipe, make sure that my hands are exceedingly clean. Because if you don't, you will pollute that tank and kill those fish. And hand sanitizer is a, a real rough one. And I don't think it's the alcohol that's in there. I think it's the glycerin in there that just does such a nasty number on those things. So um, Amy says, black cling film on the back. Wow. Amy, tell me more. Um, I have tried to get away from using tank covers by using, um, you know, the, the saran wrap or cling film. I can't get it to cling to the, it just won't cling. Um, so first of all, I had no such idea that there was such a thing as black cling film. Black cling film, that's a rough one. I had no idea there was such a thing Second of all, how do you get it to stick? So, um, Benny says, I got 11 eggs so far. Um, well, it's a good start. Can't complain with that. Let me have a sip here. Yeah, I would like to know more about um, black cling film, that, or film, doggone it. I think that would be an awesome thing. Um, one of the ideas I had too, um, so I've got one tank with a piece of driftwood in it that puts out so much tannin that it's almost impossible to see. I put a high intensity light on there to see inside and I've got my uh, 397 and um, oh, a different kind of spotted Cory, or I'm sorry, spotted Pleco in there. They adore that. but. I can never see what's going on in there, but those guys love it. And I'm really starting to think that darkening the tank by either painting or perhaps a cling film or perhaps um, you know, some cardboard or something might at least do the plecos more good. The other thing I'm starting to get into more is, um, is uh, rainbow fish. I picked up some... Oh, what did I pick up? Parkinsoni over the weekend. Those guys really are kind of skittish. And so I really want to provide um, more of a darkened sort of tank for them. So wouldn't mind doing that. Um, let me go to the um, chat here. Tom Patterson, hey, um, use black plastic tablecloth and just tape it down. 
Tom, I, I assume, right? Nothing uh, complex there. Um, let's see, Jade, I'm cheap. So either go old school with tin foil or get poster board at the dollar store for aquarium background. Now, Jada, that's something I've done as I've got poster board on a couple of the tanks. And I may do more of that because that's not so bad either. Um, let me see here, Benny. I always rinse my hand in warm water for 30 seconds before putting my hands into my tank. Not a bad way to go. Um, and you're supposed to wash your hands for um, 30 seconds anyway. Uh, or after, what was it, uh, I was told to do, uh, sing happy birthday, happy birthday to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, Amy says it's for Windows privacy film. Just spray water the tank then, oh, 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 Amy, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep, I do. Now, that's a little bit on the pricey side, but hey, um, that's not such a bad way to go. Uh, Dragon Craig, get polyfill, put it in the filter remove a good bit of the tendons. Yeah, I could. I could do that, and, and maybe I should. They seem to be so happy with it. You know, I think I'd only be removing it for me, you know, but but maybe they don't know the difference. I don't know, you know. I need to go down and have a good conversation with those 397s. Okay, look, boys, you know, do you like the tannins? Do you not like the tannins? Do you even know what I'm talking about? So, <laughs> um. Let's see, Bob says, Craig, give them a plant with an open area to swim, interact with them, staying around when you feed them. They're like herpes, very food motivated. Herpes, very food motivated. Okay. Um, I understand what you're saying, Bob. So here's one of, the, so one of my wholesalers, if you, let me back up. So the, my next step is what I really wanted to start with was Bozmani, but I actually won some Park and Sony on, um, on Steven's um, live stream. And so I picked those up at Ohio Fish Rescue last week. And by the way, if you guys don't know about Ohio Fish Rescue, I wish you would look it up and go to their website. They have some of the most amazing things. They have a... Um, I want to tell you it's a 20 foot, but it might be a 28 foot long tank that they are installing right now. It came from the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. They actually have a swimming pool in the middle of the house. It's just something like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, I went and picked up these um, Parkinsoni. They're really cute. But what I wanted was Bosmani. Okay, so everybody knows the gold standard in Bosmani um, is and now I'm drawing a blank. I had it a few minutes ago, but it's an aging moment here. One of the guys breathes the most gorgeous. I mean, they're, oh, Gary, Gary, Gary Lang does um, the most beautiful Bosmani. But, I mean, you know, he can't provide the entire world with them, right? And so my wholesaler has plenty of Bosmani, but I don't know what you get when you order those. Are they absolutely gorgeous? Are they going to be Gary Lang? Probably not. Um but how bad will they really be? And at a wholesale price of you know four dollars and fifty cents, you know, give them a shot and see what you get. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. But um, leaning strongly toward giving that a try just to see what bubbles up. So, um, Dragon said, cut cardboard from boxes, spray paint it the color I want for background. Oh, that's an awesome idea too. You guys are really um, clever and much more well, clever than I am. Uh, Dragon says the darkness they're comfortable with. Uh, and you mean rainbows, right, Dragon? The, they want the, the uh, darkness, or do you mean the 397s, or maybe you mean all of the uh, all of them? Um, Tom says cellophane works good, too, as light deflector on the glass lids. Uh, jumped on me here. A taper clip. So, Tom, um, I think you and I are of the same mind here, cellophane. I don't think there's really such a thing as cellophane anymore. So I've tried um, like stretch wrap, cling wrap, this wrap, the other wrap. It won't hold to the top of a tank. And if there's any moisture, that seems to be the kiss of death. So I don't know what to use along those lines, but I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, Jada says, yeah, polyfill from Walmart. You can get a monster bag for like three month, three bucks. So here's my trick on polyfill. If you look around, you can get like a king size pillow 
for three books. Same thing, right? And I just ripped those open. And I, so I use those in my uh, box filters in the guppy. Well, I use them in box filters in every tank. Um, you guys haven't been down to the fish room in a while. So every tank has multiple box filters, multiple sponge filters, um, multiple hang on backs. And I have a roving set of six canisters that I move from tank to tank to tank to tank. And then I also have um, power heads, you know, that I man, stick down inside the tank to churn up the bottom that hopefully all the various filters manage to pull the, the mulm and the junk out. And then when they don't do that, then I go in and you know, clean up the rest of it there. And, oh, and I used to actually keep um, one other filter in there too, but um, I don't do that anymore. So am I over filtered? Probably, but seems to work for me. Um, let's see, Dragon says, Jada, not that. This is impregnated sponge that removes nitrates, heavy metals. And I, Dragon, I know exactly what you're talking about. Comes in sheets. It's about that thick, and then you get sheets like that. And you can get them for. Let me pull this out because I'm not really listening to anything. Um, it works. There's one for ammonia. There's one for nitrite. Nitrate. You're talking about the one that's actually, excuse me, says polyfill on the outside of that. And so. Um, I'll get some, I think I actually have some of that down there. So I'm gonna throw some in and um, we'll see how that goes, just cause I would like to look at that. Um, Dragon says, I mean, Plecos and Corys. Yep, okay, so we're on the same uh, brain there. Most rainbows come from clear, flash, fast flowing water or clear lakes. Okay, I appreciate that. I don't know dra uh, rainbows very well. What I was looking for is, um, I know I need dither fish for the Pleco tanks, and I'm at a loss whether to use guppies that I cull from the, you know, the IFGA stuff that I'm trying to grow out. Should I throw those in there, um, or should I try for something nice like uh, rainbows? And 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 so I think I'm going to go the rainbow direction. So uh, let me go back here. Um, uh, Lucky Easter baskets and a roll at Dollar Tree. Uh, Okay, not sure I know what you mean, Tom, but I will try and get there and figure that out. Aquarium Cowboy, howdy, as Pearl used to say. So glad you could make it. Um, Jadis is a goofy polyfill. If you're not careful, wrap it around the impeller, and then you go, you cut it off from the impeller. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about from that standpoint, Jada. Um, and you'll burn out an impeller that way. So. But Dragon, that's not um, what he's talking about. This is actually pretty stiff. Um, when it's dry, you could actually probably uh, sand the rust off of a car bumper with it. And even when you wet it, it's it's got some, you know, some pretty good mush to it there. So uh, let's see, Jada Tom Peterson. That's what my neighbor uses for background from Dollar Tree. It looks really cool. Hmm. Amy says dwarf neon rainbows. Okay, give me my pen here. Dwarf. Dude, oh, good Lord. Been a long day. Dwarf. Um, neon rain. Tom, that's what I was referring to with cellophane. Yeah, Tom, I, I do the same thing. And people catch me all the time. I'll call it tinfoil. They go, what's tinfoil? <sighs> okay, aluminum wrap. You know, it, it'd, be, it'd be like, you know, I go Q-tip. What's that? Okay, I'm sorry. A semi-sterile, uh, you know. So now I know what you meant by cellophane. It's just we don't have – cellophane used to be that hard plastic that was on the outside of a cigarette pack, you know, and that sort of – we don't have that anymore. But um, we do have, like, you know, cling wrap. Problem with cling wrap is it clings to everything that you don't want it to and cling to a damn thing you do want it to. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else. Um, the Dragon says, this is the product by uh, Poly Bio Marine called Poly Filter. Yep. And you know, I probably should um, go get, I probably, everything is out of the package, but I'll look it up and I'll put it up. So um, Tom says, Jade, I have, have it on one tank that looks good. 
Tom, I would love to see pictures. Just uh, make sure I know what you're talking about there. So um, Sharon says, Lucas Brutz has some beautiful rainbows. Well, his come, I think, I'm almost sure from uh, Gary Lang. And um, not like I don't want Gary Lang rainbows, but I mean, this is like waiting out, you know, IFGA breeders. You got to, you know, get your place in line. You better, you know, uh, there are very few and far between and I'm, and I'm blessed that Steven sells to me. And, um, if I could get some Gary Lang rainbows, that would be absolutely fantastic. But I, I don't even know how to get in touch with him. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at there. So it is just about five fifty-five, and I don't want to overstay my welcome here because Bob Kaler is up next and, um, I want to send all of you guys over there. I want to thank you so much. Um, I always hate when people go. I want to thank everyone. Well, if you'd really like to thank people, why don't you go ahead and thank them? So thank you, everyone, for coming on to my stream, participating, taking care of me. Look at, look, oh, where's Edgar? I woke up Edgar because I yelled loud, and then I used his name. Now he's wondering where the food is. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for um everything for for stopping by the live stream for supporting me uh for participating um i just am very blessed and very appreciative of it let's see we are at 50 so i'm literally going to stop now unless we have anything more i, wanna, I know you guys are kind of talking to each other so i want to uh, not cut you guys off but i do want to send you all over to uh, bob kaylor's next i'm going to go try and grab a bite to eat and then i'm going to jump on bob's um live stream if memory serves, this is the third live stream today of 14 of them that are going on. See how many you can get to. There should be a prize if you get to all 14. I just um, I just don't know if there is one. Amy, you're very welcome. I'm so um, I'm so blessed. You all guys can can stump, come and hang out. Um, so there you go. So go over to Bob Kaler's. Go away. Off you go now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you next uh, Wednesday at uh, the same bat time, same bat channel. Okay? 5 o'clock Eastern time. Take care, everybody. See ya. Okay, make the mouse work.